Hello my fellow riders, today we're going to be looking at how to tighten the headstock bearings on your scooter. The way that we're going to do this is tools required, diagnosis, how to repair the problem and how to check it afterwards. Tools required. So on this bike in particular, it may be slightly different on your bike. Make sure that you check before you get your tools. I would always recommend getting a decent set of, of spanners. If you go and buy some from Halfords, um, you may pay a little bit more in the beginning, but they have a lifetime guarantee. So if anything goes wrong with them, then you just take them back and they have to replace them. So on this one, you have a twatty stick, a chisel, um, flat end is usually better, this one's pointed, but there you go. And on this bike in particular, a 32 millimeter spanner. Also, you will need a screwdriver. Everybody should have one of them anyway, so. Usually these bikes come with tools under the seat. These tools will not be suitable for doing this job, so I wouldn't even try it because it just won't work. So the way to diagnose this is hold on to your front brake, rock the bike backwards and forwards, and if you can feel a clonking from the front end, this means that you're probably gonna have to do your headstock bearings. Now there is another way to check it as well. You lift up the bike, uh, so put some weight on the back end, lift it up, and you can pull it back and forward. There, it's a bit hard to do it, whilst I'm recording, but you should be able to feel a bit of clonking in there. That sound that you can hear is actually the desk, but that's, that's all right. With most of these scooters, uh, it's the same process of doing it. So sometimes on them, you get this front panel here. You can just take that off and you'll see the bearings inside and you adjust it like that. On this one is a bit of a pain and you can't do it like that. So as you can see on this bike, this is where the headstock uh, bearings is located and there's one at the top and one also at the bottom. The way that it's held in is by this, I think it's a 27 mil, uh, 32 mil nut and this uh, strange looking other nut underneath. And so what you need to do is loosen off the top nut and then you need to rotate the bottom nut you can actually get a proper tool for this, but we just use a chisel and a hammer because you can't usually get the tool in there. So you undo the top nut, you rotate the bottom nut until um, you no longer feel the clonkiness in the front wheel, and then you tighten the top nut back up again. So I will just do that on this one. You shouldn't really be able to do that with your fingers. So it should be tighter than that. So you hit this clockwise. And it doesn't take much, it just takes a little bit but as you can see that the bottom nut is now solid. So again, you lift up the front end, turn it, make sure that it's not locking itself. And so that's better, but I still think I need a little bit more. So this one has to be fairly tight, but you don't need to go and, and really, really smack the bejeebas out of it because it just end up breaking it. So it's still got movement side to side. And all you have to do now is re-tighten up that uh, 
bolt at the top. This one has to be fairly tight. See, now it's gone all notchy again. So that then will sort out the problem. The bolt's tight on the top, the bolt's tight on the bottom, but you still have free movement on that. Then bolt it all back together. Now this isn't uh, that hard of a job. At a shop you should be looking at about, they usually charge an hour's labor regardless of, of what's done, but there shouldn't really be any parts required unless your bearings have rounded off. If the bearings have rounded off, then you need to replace it and then that becomes more of a two hour job because you've got to take the whole of the headstock out, uh, the front wheel, the top, take all the uh, nuts and bolts off of the main, main shaft and then you've got to replace the bearings, put some grease in it. You may also have to replace the cups which the bearings sit in. But that does it. that's not required on this bike. Quite often people don't do it, but this one got to a point where uh, it became quite dangerous because um, when you pulled the brake, it was lurching forward because the whole front end was moving like this. Now I've showed you how to uh, check, adjust, and check again. The headstock bearings on a scooter. Now a motorbike, is pretty much the same thing but they're not covered by the fairing and you can usually get to them without taking everything off. The only difference that you may have to do with a motorbike over a scooter is you may have to take the headstock itself off the top one. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you've uh, learned something from this and you should be able to do this at home from now on. If you don't feel comfortable in doing this yourself, just take it to a garage and you should be expecting about an hour's labor. So please check my channel for some other tutorials, i.e. servicing and repairs. And if you have any videos that you would like to see in the future, please comment below. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay updated to all my latest content. But as always, ride safe.